Did you know if you're driving down the road, pick a speed, 60 miles an hour, there is a part of your car that is going forward at zero miles per hour at all times. I have no idea what you're talking about right now. This There's doesn't... another part of your car okay. that's going forward at twice that speed at every moment. Oh, God. It's all happening in your wheels. The part of the wheel at any moment <gasps> oh my that's God. in contact with the pavement is not moving at all. If your car were skidding, right. then the part of the wheel in contact with the road would be would moving be forward important. at the rate you're skidding forward. But that's why okay? you're moving forward. It's, it's why you're moving it's forward. It's why you're because, moving forward. Because part of the wheel is not moving at all. Because okay. if it were, you'd be spinning in place. <laughs> Correct. The center of the wheel, it's spinning, but the exact center is going forward at the same speed the car is. The top of the wheel, is going forward at twice the speed of the car. Twice the speed of the car. Wow. Okay, because notice, if the chassis of the car is moving at the speed of the car, obviously, the top of the wheel is moving faster than the chassis. Past the, cha Past the, the chassis. The, the top of the wheel well is going forward at your speed, at your speedometer's right. speed. The top of the wheel is going faster than that to come around to the bottom so that it's not moving, it's moving at, all. at all. And if you, that if you run the math on that, you get, you get zero at the bottom, the speed of the car in the middle of the wheel, and twice the speed of the car at the top of the wheel. This is the geometry, the math, and the physics of an axled wheel on any moving vehicle. But wait, there's that, more. That is awesome. Now think of the wheel that's on a train. There's the metal flat part that touches the, the metal rails. But then there's another part. It's like a coupler. There's an outer part that extends outside of the track, which right. enables the train to stay on the, on track. the track. Otherwise, we'll just drive off, right? So th these lips that are exterior to the wheels keep the train aligned on the track. But here's what's interesting. They dip below the contact point of the wheel and the rail by a little bit, but whatever it is, they dip below. If the top of your wheel is going twice the speed, the center of the wheel is going the speed, the bottom of the wheel is going zero, anything lower than the bottom of the wheel is moving backwards. Oh, snap. <laughs> That's right. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's going in reverse. It's going reverse. It's for any train, there are parts of that train that are moving backwards on the track at all times. That's that's pretty wild. Just picture that. You know, there's the wheel rolling. Right. The part that's below, below the contact the, point right. is moving backward. It actually lands in a place behind where it started. Right. That means it moved backwards. That's right. That's insane. That's so insane. I just thought I'd put that out there. I know it's not uh, nothing deeper than that. It's the just, next well, time I more... tie up a woman and put her on the tracks, I'm going to let her know that this <laughs> you're going to learn something as I twirl my mustache. <laughs> Here's something interesting. So that means there's a part of your car that's right. going at all speeds from zero up to twice the speed of the car. Correct? That's right. Imagine attaching some device to your wheel that sends out a microwave signal and you can adjust it up or down or, or from the center of the wheel to the bottom, sends out a microwave signal that will report a speed of your car at any speed you choose. The police officer's there with the radar gun oh. with the return signal that's going 30 miles an hour, even though you're going 60. They'll get the reflected signal off of your car, right? But if you can override that with a more powerful signal sent from your wheels, you can broadcast any speed you choose down to zero if it's attached to the wheel. That's the speed I'm choosing, by the way. <laughs> well, you can't do zero because they know you're lying. Well, but that's, that's, if, if that's any, what I'm any, any, any place between the center of the wheel and the bottom. Bottom of the wheel. It will, you can broadcast a speed of that spinning wheel at any speed less than your actual driving speed. To configure this would be really weird and how to make that happen because it has to be moving with the tire. I don't know how you would design the engineering of that, but it's just something to think about because there's always a part of your car that's going everywhere from the speed of your car down to zero and up to twice the speed of the car. Well, maybe, that's you know, all. when the cop pulls you over, you can just tell him, I don't know what speed you recorded, but uh, I don't know. You should have been looking at the bottom of my wheels. 
<laughs> yeah, that'll work in court. <laughs> There's another kind of wheel, which is the shape of the object that rotates within a Wankel engine. So if you imagine an equilateral triangle, but right. curve the corners of it and make the sides a little bit convex, right? So yeah, it's a triangle. I, I had a Mazda once. Oh, you did? With a Wankel engine. Yeah, okay. I had a Mazda. So, so that shape, interestingly... The distance from the bottom to the top right. remains the same no matter how it's oriented. We used to call the... them spirographs when I was a kid. <laughs> okay, yeah, they're, so they're, they're related. The related geometry to it. So if you take a plank and place it on top of one of these triangular shapes and roll it, the plank will be absolutely steady. Right. Even though it looks like the thing is bobbing up and down. It's exactly. because there's no central axle to it. Right. Okay, we think a wheel needs a wheel that gives you a smooth ride needs one central axle because a wheel is the same distance to each point on the rim. You can design a shape where the top is always the same distance from the bottom, even though the center is moving in your spirographian sort of way. Nice. So I actually built one of these when I was a kid in, in woodshop in seventh grade. And I don't think it's with me here. That is it's in wild. a closet somewhere. I'm going to have to dig it up and we'll do another one. Just fun things to do with with a Wankel engine. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's an unfortunate name, but yeah. <laughs> I know, right? It's a little weird. It is a little well, weird, yeah. but it's one of the many engines that have been developed over the years to convert uh, chemical energy into kinetic energy. Now you know that part of your car it ain't moving at all. But don't use that as the excuse when you get pulled over. 